Welcome to this Excel video. What we will do today is follow up from the last video and look at a practical application of the lookup. Now the example I'm going to use is a injury surveillance tool. So training athletes, um, we've got lots of tools that I've created which are about the training side. What you can also gain from is documenting the nature and causes and various things relating to injuries. So you can do some work around that. Here we are um, in one of the uh, reference sheets. We have two sets of data which we will use inside VLOOKUP formula. So one of them is a list of athletes and next to those names is their sport, whether they're male or female, and the city that they live in. Second small table is the uh, medical staff that will be working with these athletes and documenting their injuries. So, so I need to create some named ranges so that we can do uh, two things, a drop down box and also some VLOOKUPs. So let's get started. I'm going to use the same method that I used in video number 64. I'm going to name the table twice. The first thing I'm going to do is select the first column and give that a name with a prefix list. So I'm just going to call this one Medic. And then I'm going to select the entire table and call that Table Medic. Same thing over here. This list is a bit longer, so I'm going to use my keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to use Control Shift Down Arrow. list athletes and select the entire top row. You could uh, use the column headings in that if you like. I'm choosing not to. Control shift down arrow and I'm going to call that table athletes. Alright, so um, being able to do those two tasks, which is creating a, a list of athletes and a table of athlete data, means that we can do a separate VLOOKUP to, uh, to get things out in both of those circumstances. Now the real um, brains behind this kind of system is the injury classification system that you've got. So I'm using one by a doctor called John Orchard. He is an Australian sports physician and he has a, a widely used injury surveillance classification system so it's called the Orchard Codes you can get it from this website shown you can download a file which contains all of these particular details so you have in column one a four character code and that corresponds to a, a, a region of injury some specific detail and types and things like that so um, what I want to do is basically create a lookup table here. I don't need to do a um, double named range for this one because I'm not going to create a drop down box. I'm just going to use the lookup table. So I'm going to select the entire top row, control shift down arrow, it goes down about 1740 rows, and I'm going to call this table of codes. So when I've created those names, uh, the details of those ranges get stored inside the name manager. So if I open that up, we can see that there are five named ranges that we've created, and there's some detail already in there for them. And it says which sheet they're on and which uh, cells it refers to. So if you do need to edit it, you can just go to the name manager, click on one of them, and then edit either just by typing or reselecting. All right, we're nearly there. We're nearly at the point where we can start doing some stuff. All right, let's get started with this data entry tool. Sometimes having data validation is a very useful way to make sure you get clean data for analysis later. So we're going to start with the consultation date field. If you click data and then data validation, we've traditionally looked at one type of data validation in my videos, and that has been using a list. But you can also specify dates. So for example, I can say I will only accept dates that are between 
these two periods. And because there can be confusion about the date format, you can say uh, how you want that format. In my side of the world, we use day, day, month, month, year, year. Uh, it's not like that everywhere. Little message now appears to tell you that. If we go to the clinician, what we want to be able to do is restrict what can be typed in there. This time we're going to use a list. If I don't remember the name that I created, I can hit F3 if I'm on a PC and I can choose it. Oops, that's not the one I want. I want that one. Now I can use VLOOKUP. So, equals VLOOKUP. I want to look up the name of the clinician. I want to look it up in a table that I created. And if I type table, you see the little menu appears that gives me the options of the various tables that I've created. Now I know it's the bottom one. The type of practitioner is in column two. And I want an exact lookup. So, we now get a doctor, and if I change that to another person, we get a therapist, so that's brilliant. Okay, the next thing I want to do is the same process, but this time for athletes. So, I want to choose a list. I'm going to hit F3, and it's going to give me various ones. I'm going to choose list of athletes, and I'm good to go. Now I'm going to do the same process as before. I'm going to choose VLOOKUP. I want to look up the athlete name. Where do I want to look it up in? A table that I've created called Table of Athletes. And we can just keep going from there. Now when you use table referencing, something uh, a little bit annoying happens. And that is, if I now copy this across, what you'll notice is here it's saying, look up the athlete name in table of athletes and give us in, what, in column two. If I drag that across, it's suddenly now looking up something else. It's now looking up sport, because as we dragged it across, it dragged that reference across. So there is a way to get around that, but it makes the formulas look complicated. So I'm just going to scoop that out. And I'm going to paste it in twice, once for gender, once for location. That now becomes three, and that now becomes four. So we've got um, VLOOKUP working nicely for us now. We can change our selection of athlete to anything we like, and we can get an update of sport, gender and location. So things are tracking nicely. Let's keep going. We're going to apply the same process. Now there is a very very long list. It's about 1750 items. So having a drop down box for that I don't think is a good idea. So I didn't create a drop down list for this code. But what I am going to do is I'm just going to get a couple of example ones in here. HKXQ I could do things such as limit using data validation that you can only put four characters in the cell. That could be uh, a useful thing if you think people are going to have problems. But now I can just get on with my VLOOKUP. Equals VLOOKUP. Whatever's in this cell. What table is it in? Let's type table and choose codes. Where's my answer? Column 2. we get that and that works well I'm not sure how big some of these uh, answers will be so um, I'll leave that column as wide as that for now now I, I mentioned before that it makes the um, it makes the formula a bit complex when you try and protect against dragging but I'm going to do it in this case just to show you what I mean so if I do same 
click on the same cell twice and have a colon in between, then I can now drag this across and it will not change. So you note that code didn't change there because I had it twice. It's an interesting um, it's an interesting solution that I found on Google where I find most of my problems uh, can be solved. But uh, I use it a lot. It does make the formulas look very, very clunky sometimes, but nevertheless it, it works. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now I've just been able to update the column number and all these things are now filling in. So if I get another code, let me um, just go down to something that makes a bit more sense sometimes. NFCA. Great, it's working fantastic. So it's populating automatically with um, what we see. And so we're now uh, in a position to just rock on and, and do more, um, more rows of data. So if I try that again, let's see if it, um, if it works as it should. So everything is now populating as it should. And because we've got a nice little table format, we've got unique column headings, we can very easily do some analysis later to find out um, different types of um, breakdowns of these injury types and things like that. So um, what you can gain from sometimes is when you've got a large data set, you might have people that are uncertain about how to, uh, which code is which. My experience with the people that work in this field is that they have a little handbook that they look through and they become very uh, um, quick to be able to identify um, the codes that they're using regularly. So I um, haven't got a drop down list but this, w this system works really well for people that I'm engaged with. So there's a practical application of VLOOKUP for you. Hopefully that clarifies what is a incredibly useful formula and gives you something interesting if you are working in the field of sports injuries. Thanks for your time.